Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I have been watercoloring for about 25 years. Before that, I used to be an oil painter. And then I got to the point in oil painting that I wanted to get more layers of color. So I decided to, uh, to go into watercolor. Our whole family was going to Europe and we we're going to Sweden, which is my heritage. And I wanted to paint in Sweden with something. So I decided to do watercolor. And I bought our kids, at that time they were quite young, I bought them small palettes and we all went to Sweden and painted. We are just looking at the subject and we are doing the boats and I thought, I can't do this with oil. And it was so intriguing to me, I decided, well, I'm just going to do more and more of this. Anyway, uh, it, it just overtook my life. And, uh, and then I started to get awards in watercolor, and uh, quite a few awards in watercolor, and started to get into the national shows and win at the national shows. And so you just don't have time to do it all. And I'm going to uh, wet it down and do an underpainting first of the three primary colors. People don't think about it a lot. But you have to have the three primary colors in your paintings if you're going to have any depth at all. So what I want to do first is to uh, just make a spotlight here. So we'll just start out with the yellow, and I always have my spray bottle handy. And it's very fluid, and it's a very yellow painting, so we're not going to worry about uh, too much yellow here. And you'll notice that each of the colors is very transparent, which means that as we add color over the top, the color that comes over the top will be transparent so you can see the color underneath. So we are creating this spotlight with the, with the three colors. Uh, what the underpainting also does is it relates your color. In other words, if you have more blues, which we will have later on with our greens, it pulls it together because it has some in the background. Uh, I think just about all my florals begin like this. And often I, I just spatter instead of put the color on because I don't want to mess up the color next to it. I want it to run on the paper. And I'm going to tip it in all directions so this paint will run together. And as it runs together, my idea of doing this is that color is much prettier when it's mixed on the paper, allowed to mingle on the paper, than when it's mixed uh, ahead of time on the palette. Now I'm going to spatter, uh, I've used yellow. The color harmonies I'm going to use now are the color harmonies of yellow. We'll talk about the color wheel. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And we just used the local color of yellow. And on one side of the yellow is orange and the other side is green. So I'm going to use some of the oranges here. This is cadmium orange. Uh, we're going to use a lot of yellows. And so the yellow supplied first will pull our color harmonies of the yellow together also. And so we have the yellows and the oranges. And the other is green. So later on, we're going to put a little bit of green in this. I, I see actually some green in the, these sunflowers. You'll see more as I go along how the yellows, oranges, and greens are incorporated into the flower itself. Now we're going to do some greens and in start, instead of just using plain green, we're going to use the color harmony of green. So the color harmony of green is on one side, again, of, of the green is yellow. And you've just seen me use Q Gold also. One side is yellow and the other side is blue. So I, what I do, I don't use much green. I have a, it's called Skip's Green here that I uh, spatter on. 
but I use mostly yellows and blues and let them mix or mingle on the paper. If you can uh, look here at the uh, yellows, the yellows kind of divide and then the Q gold sets in and then the Antwerp starts to mingle and the Antwerp forms a green and if you want that to run a little bit, it can run more and form more of a, the look of petals. Watercolor is, uh, to me, watercolor it needs to be fluid like this. I just love to see this run together. It's so much fun. You know, in life, it's uh, one-tenth that's maybe talent and, and nine-tenths hard work. And you keep doing it uh, all your life. And then I've, I haven't done these sunflowers, but I've done sunflowers. And uh, because of it, you get uh, much more fluid at it, and you can kind of foresee what, what is uh, going to be here. In every painting, you have to have some kind of a vision of how it's going to be, or you wouldn't choose the subject. First, first of all, you choose the subject because it inspires you. And then you, you keep looking at the subject and decide you, where you want your lightest light. To me, really, painting is, is the combination of shapes and color and texture, uh, which means detail. And if I can find a subject like this, and uh, I'm going to keep working into behind it to pull out the lights here and the detail, it really excites me. I'm trying to lace this together now so you can see the darks coming together behind the lights. You notice that dark, the orange I put on? There's blue put next to it. Then when you break up the shapes, they have to be different around the next shape because you don't want to follow that shape. You want to think about, whoa, what's the shape behind the shape? And so then you kind of go into that. So now I'm creating some more of these petals back here. So I'm going to think about the centers now. And I want to make the centers all a little different. In that, they're a little bit more brown, browny or brown than the rest of this painting. It means that they would have more of the reds in them. And it undoubtedly becomes the centerpiece, the, the center of interest, of not it? And then I also want to show you how to press leaves in and give some uh, texture. And I'm going to uh, create a stencil here on a few leaves and see um, if I can get an impression on the painting. Just press down real hard there. See what happens. Ta da! If you do one stencil, you need to do several. So I'm going to pop the interest area out with the darkest darks behind the interest area right there. And then you kind of seem to have a little circle here. Demo goes. <clears throat> I'm not going to finish it totally, but you can get the idea. In the interest area, again, I strive for the lightest lights, the darkest darks, the brightest brights, and the most detail. So um, I keep turning it uh, each uh, different ways and thinking about it and uh, think about, well, what am I going to do here and how can I pull it together? I feel like it's coming together now this way. Um, the lights and the darks and the counter movement is coming across this way. The darks are coming this way and the lighter lights are coming this way. But I think I'm going to like the painting and I don't want to go too far. Nothing ventured, nothing gained is what I say. You just kind of play. Play a little bit, you know, take a little time to play. After all, if it's not fun, it's not worth doing.
If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.